Now let's talk about counters and shift registers. Counters um, increment on each clock edge. So your, your, your watch is a counter. Let's go in 0, 1, 2, 59, and then it's, um, it's going back to 0. So it's a mod 60 uh, counter. But a counter increments on each clock edge. And it's used to cycle through numbers. So the example I just gave, or here's a 3-bit counter where it counts, starts at 0, and then goes to 7, and then goes back to 0. So again, examples are digital clock, clock displays. Um, the program counter, which we'll talk about in, um, in the next chapter, in Chapter 6, keeps track of current instructions that are executing. So it says, hey, instruction 0 is executing. Oh, now it's instruction 1. Now it's instruction 2. So it keeps track of of which instruction we're, we're on when we're executing your program. And here's the symbol of our, of our counter. It has no inputs, um, but it does have a reset. So we can reset it to uh, 0 and has an end bit output. And so it looks, you know, the symbol kind of looks a lot like a flip-flop, so it doesn't have any inputs. But so here's our counter. How do we, how do we build this? Well, we have an adder, right? We have an adder where we could say, okay, well, here's an adder. And well, what do we want to add together? Um, some, its result, we want to add to one, right? The end bit representation of one. But can we, can we just do this? Can we just say, oh, okay, well, then good. Well, we can't, right? Then we have a race, but we can put a flip flop in there. And say, okay, well, well here's a flip flop. That's a resettable flip flop. Here's Q, our output. And this is tied to reset clock. And then we feed back that Q output and add it to one. The next clock edge, that incremented value becomes a new value, and so forth. And so here's a, a picture. Remember, this is the end bit representation of one. It's not just a single wire. And so here's an end bit counter that increments by one. We could have counters that increment by different amounts. Right? We could have a counter that increments by four or some other number as well. So here's a counter in Verilog form. This is the, the, um, the system Verilog idiom. So module counter, we have our clock and reset inputs and our single output Q. In this, in this case, it's an 8-bit counter. And if always a pause edge clock, if reset, Q gets 0. Otherwise, it gets Q plus 1. And here's an alternate, um, more verbose version of the counter would have um, again, our inputs and outputs are the same, clock reset and Q, and we have a uh, next Q, we're kind of explicitly showing the adder, um, a next Q internal signal, where we assign next Q equals Q plus one, we instantiate that adder, and then at pause edge clock, either um, if it's reset, if uh, reset is asserted, Q gets zero, otherwise Q gets next Q. We can also use counters to divide the clock. So um, for example, if we want to look at a blinking LED, if it runs as, fa as fast as the onboard clock, you know, typically at least 50 megahertz, our eye won't detect that LED blinking. So we need to slow down the clock in order to toggle the clock. So let's take an example. So here's our clock signal. And suppose we have just a one bit counter. So here's a clock going 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And our our counter is going to increment on each clock edge. So let's suppose it's zero here. The next clock edge is going to be one, and it's going to add one, off go back to zero, and then one. And so if we look at the, the cycle time here, right, here's our TC, our cycle time of our clock, and here's the output, output of our one bit counter, and it has a cycle time of two TC, or half of the frequency of the clock. And so for each n bits that we add, we get 2 to the n 
a division of two to the n of the clock. So for example, a three bit counter would have zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And so we can see that this frequency, right, every clock edge we get zero, and another clock edge we get one. This takes two TC. This one takes four TC, or divides the clock uh, frequency by four, and this one takes eight TC. So this three bit counter, if we look at just the most significant bit, it divides, it multiplies the, the clock period by eight and divides the frequency by eight. And so um, it's useful for, um, for dividing the clock. So for example, if we have a 50 megahertz clock, if we look at the most significant bit of a 24-bit counter, our 24-bit counter, the frequency would be 50 megahertz divided by 2 to the 24, which is 2.98 hertz. We can also use counters to produce digitally controlled oscillators. So we'll use the n-bit counter that we just talked about, but instead of adding one on each cycle, we're gonna add p. And so now the most significant bit of that counter, the most significant output of that counter, will toggle at the native clock frequency times p over two to the n instead of one over two to the n. So let's say, for example, our clock frequency is 50 megahertz and we wanna create a 200 hertz signal. So we wanna make P over two to the N equal to 200 divided by 50 megahertz. So we can try N equals 24, so a 24 bit counter and P equals 67. And we're gonna get the output frequency is equal to 50 megahertz times P, which is 67 over two to the N or two to the 24. And we get pretty close. 199.676 hertz. We could also use a 32-bit counter and get even closer. So with a 32-bit counter and a P of um, 17,179, we get even closer to um, a, approximating a 200 hertz uh, clock frequency. So shift registers are also useful um, where we can shift a new bit in on each clock edge. So it looks like a bunch of registers, right? Back to back registers here. But we have this input S in, shift in, or serial in. S stands for a serial input that we're going to shift. So serial in. And then we also have serial out, S out, where we're going to shift out some, some value. So Q0, we also have these internal outputs Q0, Q1, Q2, all the way up to Q sub n minus one at the end. And so, for example, we could in time shift over some value. We have some value 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, something like that, right? Over time, that zero is gonna shift in and it's gonna keep shifting over as the new bits shift in and we're gonna get that value, you know, we'll just do part of it, 0, 1, 1, and the zero is waiting to be get shifted in. And so we can actually turn this serial input into a parallel output. I can read those bits now and parallel off of those internal wires. So we call shift register serial to parallel converters because it's converting again this serial input S in to a parallel output that I can read in my circuit. And this is often useful for so for example, chips where we have a limited number of pins are always limited, right? We always need more pins than, than we have. So these external interfaces to our chip, I can just use a single wire to, you know, over time or in, seri in series, shift in a bunch of bits. And if I have a shift register in there, I can then use those, those bits in parallel inside of my chip. So for example, if I'm trying to set the value of a, of a counter, I could shift in the, the value of it in series and then use that um, within my counter. So another version of a, of a shift register is a shift register with parallel load. So let's look at this one. This looks, you know, this part, if we took away the multiplexer and just fed S in here, 
this is actually just my you know, regular shift register if I didn't have that multiplexer in there and that load signal. But now we may want to have the case where our shift register could also act like a regular shift register. So when load equals one, let's see what happens. When load equals one, well, into these registers, I'm actually just feeding a value D, my data, into these registers. So it looks like a regular n bit register when load is equal to one. But when load is equal to zero, now it's gonna it's gonna act like a serial um, that that series input is going to get shifted in. So now it acts like a shift register. So we can we can use this in that that case I just talked about where we have a counter and usually we want it to act like a regular register right our counter that was part of our or I mean our register that was part of our counter usually we want it to act like just you know part of that counter and so we'll use load equals one but sometimes we want to we want to shift in in this in the serial in input the sn input some value into that counter. So maybe we want to preset it with some value. Um, and so then we will, we could make load equal to zero and say, actually, I'm going to shift in a value now. I'm not just ignore what D is doing. I want to shift in these values from serial, the serial input. So this is a shift register with parallel load that can either act as a regular shift register, uh, regular register, n bit register, when load is equal to one, or when load is equal to zero, acts like a shift register. And we often use shift registers or this shift register with parallel load to um, to test chips. So give our register some preset value. And actually, you know, all or most of the registers in a in a chip can be connected in series, so we can load the into all the entire registers of the of a chip with some um, known value using the serial input, and then set load back out equal to one, and it ignores the serial input and starts computing. At that at that state. Here's our system Verilog idiom for a shift register with parallel load. So we have our inputs, clock and reset, and load and serial in. And we also have our D input when we're treating it like a, a regular register when load is equal to one. And then we have our outputs, our parallel output Q, and our serial output S out. And so here we have uh, a, an asynchronously resettable shift register. So it reacts to uh, reset going high. If reset, we reset our, our register, Q gets zero. Otherwise, we check if load is true. If load is true, then Q gets its inputs from D from the data input acts like a regular register. Otherwise, Q gets, well, the shifted value of Q. So, right, instead of going from Q sub n minus one, we shift it left by one. So Q sub n minus one gets shifted out into S out and everything else shifts left. Q sub n minus two to zero and we shift in the serial input.